Bob, and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. Ants, oh, that was my phone. <laughs> Answering your twin, what? Put your face straight then. <laughs> Don't take your face for shit. Well, I've not heard that in ages, such a really? great insult, isn't it? Answering your 21st century questions and finding to solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, what do you do if no one replies to your message in a group WhatsApp? And how do you react to receiving a clone of pussy for your birthday? And what should you do if you've... Have you used that yet? No, I have not. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not your usual agony ants, are we? William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert. No, we're not, Jordan North, radio and television presenter. I'm more premier crew, you're more so-solid crew. And that's from Erica in Norfolk. Premier crew. Uh, it's like the first vintage or the, a really good wine. It's a wine term. Oh, okay. I believe. I probably got that wrong. Sorry to David Cartwright. Okay, shall we have a G&D? Let's have a G&D. Uh, could you pull the D? And I have got... So- Thank- Ooh, that was a good sound effect. It was good this That week. was solid. Um, I've got a new bottle of gin. Uh, this is Welsh gin. This is not, with a K, dry gin, which is distilled... U- which is distilled using the purest Welsh water. Oh. Uh, and it was given to me by the lovely Greg and Carly at St. Fried House, which is where I went oh. for... Good noise. Uh, which is where I went for Leanne and Tom's wedding. Oh, OK. And they're G&Divas. Are they? Are they? And uh, it was a gorgeous wedding in a gorgeous setting. And let's hope this gin is equally gorgeous. Everyone's making their own gin now. I had gin from um, Derbyshire, I think, the other day. Victoria? I can't remember. No. Where was it? Yeah. Also, I, I, I love getting an L&ER train. Right. I've never told you this. Because mm-hmm. there'll be certain places where you are. I love the L&ER trains because they do the... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did they comp your upgrade? No. Can I just finish? <laughs> okay. The best sausage roll I've ever had is on the L&ER train. Right. Every time I get an L&ER train, I look forward to their sausage rolls. Well, they've had four mentions. Well, not, I'm not giving them, like, they've not paid me to say that. Right. Or whilst I'm at it or not. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I'd like to toast Julie and Aleandro. I'll read the letter in a minute to explain why, but let's just toast Julie and Aleandro. And to everyone who has voted for us to win the Listener's Choice Awards at the British Podcast Awards. Yes, voting's now over, but thank you again if you voted. It truly is appreciated. To Julie and Aleandro. Now, Julie sent us this letter. So I'm going to read it to you. Hi, guys. I'm a new g and diva, and I just wanted to say a massive thank you. You make such a difference to people's lives. My fiancé passed away a few months ago after a long battle with cancer. We managed to get him back to Colombia so he could be with his family when he passed. After nearly four months away from my family, I travelled back to our home in Spain without him. Then I discovered your podcast, and you've made me smile, laugh, and cry often at the same time. Your absolutely outrageous sense of humour would definitely have made my fiancé laugh too. I've been completely lost without him, and listening to your podcast has made me smile for a few moments in the day and made me feel a little less lonely. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. A toast of gin and de bonnet to you and Aleandro from Julie. Oh, Julie. Well, thank you very much. We're glad our silly little podcast helps. Well, it's going to make me cry. Why have you read that out? That's so oh, sweet. Well, because, you know, we do light and shade. Julie. Thank you so much. That's really, really, really lovely. Thank you. Bless you. As always, if you need our help with something, then we'd love it if you'd get in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexedmyboss.com. Or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram. That's at sexedmyboss. Or you can write to William, who, in the fullness of time, promises a handwritten to reply in one of our luxury greeting cards with executive sales seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sexedmyboss.com. How's your week been, my friend? Well... As we record this, we're a couple of days into recording our hopefully award-winning audiobook for the book that's both the book and the audiobook around on the 9th of November. You can pre-order them at sexandmyboss.com forward slash book. Yes. Um, it's an interesting experience doing an audiobook with you. Why? Well, doing a podcast is interesting enough, but obviously we've got to, we've got to, in effect, follow a script. There are lots of embellishments around it and stuff that's not actually in the book that we're doing, um, including entire words that suddenly appear that you have inserted in, or words that are in the actual book that aren't in the audio book, and including also some burps. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's been it's been a good week, tiresome at times, but most mostly a, a great week recording mm. our audio book. I feel like a proper author. Oh, do you? With my glasses on. 
Yes, you've brought in your thick rim glasses. Probably thick rim glasses. I've got my cigarettes on side, like a proper old... And I'm not I'm joking. You did ask on day one if you could smoke in the booth. Well, I thought... You know, like that scene where Princess Margaret in The Crown's doing... Desert a, Island Disc. Desert Island Disc, and it's just there with the flag. <laughs> I thought it was quite cool. It's not cool. It's never cool. I'm called William. And, um, yeah, and during the recording today, I've been a bit... I got a bit of indigestion, so I keep burping, which is so rude and a bit ignorant. So we apologise to anyone that... I mean, you're not going to hear that, but to whoever's editing it. Well, what you might hear, though, on day one yesterday, I hadn't had breakfast. So somewhere throughout chapter two, you can hear my stomach. <laughs> Literally grumbling. I thought the walls were coming down. <laughs> I thought there was an earthquake. Well, I made sure I got something inside me this morning before yeah. we started. You had a bit of sausage inside you, didn't you? I did, yes. Yeah. What was it? Tuscan sausage? Tuscan, yes. What makes it Tuscan? was from Italy, from Tuscany. Oh, is it? Yeah. I've always wanted to go there. I mean, it's probably not. It's probably made in, like, you know, Surrey. But it's called Tuscan sausage. It's maybe the style of sausage. Like Madri. Oh. All right, well, let's not start this again. <laughs> stop the enemy. <laughs> the people of Madri, stop the enemy. I'll see you in court. <laughs> I'm joking. Talking of alcohol, though, I'm being led astray. I've heard... So, Viral Freddy, who uh, popped his head in yesterday to the studio. So, if you've seen all of William Hansen, all over I'm sorry. TikTok, <laughs> all over Instagram, all these videos he's doing at the moment is because he's got a social media manager now who's called Freddy, who is just. He makes you sound like you <laughs> grew up down the pits. <laughs> <laughs> he just. It's only the second time I met him yesterday, and he is so posh and so funny. So funny. Anyway. Anyway, um, Freddie and I were up doing some filming in Manchester and uh, on the train on the way back, it was a Friday, it was that very, very, very hot Friday, um, he decided that he would go to Marks and Spencer's and buy some gin tins, I three for seven. Tin. Yeah. So he bought six. And he, th- he said, come on, let's have a drink on the train. I said, I've never, I've never had an alcoholic he drink on the train. He said, come on, <laughs> come along, let's have a drink on the train, old chap. And I said, no, and I'm certainly not drinking a, a gin tin. Well, just as we went past Milton Keynes, I finished my third. He said you downed the first one in three minutes. <laughs> yes. Well, it was a very hot day. He said you absolutely nailed them. You said you were going to have one and you had all three. Yes. Well, I'm being led astray. I love a gin tin for Mark Spencer. Do you? Yeah. I love any gin tins, but them ones are really nice. Don't... Well, I'm reliably told they're doubles. Yeah. Yeah, whereas a lot of the other ones are singles. A bit like gin and the bonnet. Oh, are they? Mm, drink responsibly, everyone. Yeah, drink responsibly. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so it will, I'm not doing any more train journeys with Freddie at the moment, because um, if, that's, if that's the route we're going to go down, it's going to assassinate my ca- character. It's going to be very popular online, but, you know, I'm going to have no, no Jordan, character ha- left. How are you, old chap? Got to see you, sport. Yeah, we, uh, we got a couple of gin tins, and um, we drank them on the train. Jolly bobbly, it was bloody it's not, good. He's not so staccato. <laughs> it's bloody, bloody awful, it was. Bloody good at the same time. It was just wonderful. Jolly old rogering, it was. <laughs> Wobbly. Um, also, but just before we get on to how your week's been, am I a bad person? In what context? So, I don't like people being irritating on public transport. I don't think anyone does. Yesterday, when I was coming in to record the audiobook, man sitting next to me, sort of a, a guy, probably, I'm going to say late 50s, early 60s, was taking up quite a lot of space with his legs. Was he manspreading? Yeah. And he was talking on his mobile phone. And at, the moment, at that point, we were above ground, so the signal was, was holding. And he was being quite loud on the phone and shouting. And I, I could feel that everyone in the carriage was listening to him. And I thought, oh, I really hope... He's still on the phone by the time we get to the tunnel outside Paddington. We go down and his phone signal cuts out, so his business deal is completely ruined. And it did, and I had a little laugh to myself. <laughs> oh. And he was very frustrated, and I thought, am I a bad person for wanting ill on that man? Yeah, that's really bad. How do you know his business deal failed? Well, because he was like, you know, he's talking and we'll get Steve in. And, and then he was like looking at his phone in a frustrated manner that we oh. had, you know, on, a, on the tube, shock, gone underground. Was he wearing... Mm. A um, open shirt yes. with a gilet on. No gilet. No, not not on one day's weather. But oh. I'm sure if it had been cooler, he would have been wearing a gilet. They all wear gilets at them. So in London now, all the um, in the old days, you'd call them yuppies. 
Is that in the, fine? In the old days. Yeah, in like on fools and horses. All this all the bankers, all the city workers. Yeah. Their their costume now is they, they all wear uh, shirts with gilets, don't mm. they? Mainly the the male, the men. Yeah. Speaking of which, yes. I'm so ready for autumn now. Are you? You know I love the summer. You know I love the bumpers. But what's what, that off for ten points? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I've been rewatching Gavin and Stacey lately. Oh, okay. Did you ever watch Gavin and Stacey? I've seen it. Oh, it's fantastic. Mm, it's not my cup oh, of tea. It's so good. It's no. so you know I love the bumpers. Um. Anyway, I'm just I'm ready for the autumn now. What are you most looking forward to? I'm gonna buy a new coat. You're gonna buy a new coat. Tell me what sort of coat you'd like. I want a trench coat. Mikey he wants a trench coat uh, too. Yeah, of course he bloody does because he everything I get he gets after me. Oh, excuse me. We dress very similar, Mike and I. I've never thought of that. Yes. Yeah, both two working class lads from up north. So. <laughs> uh, okay, what colour do you want this trench coat to be? I'm going to get, because I've lost me the other one, I want it to be blue. I don't think this is very interesting. Yeah, but so. what sort of blue? Describe it. Navy blue. Na- okay, yeah. like a dark navy or a yeah, lighter dark navy? navy. Double yeah. breasted, single breasted? Single breasted. Okay. Just a nice autumn coat. And where will it finish? Like, just below the waist? Above the knee, at the uh, knee, below the knee. Mid length. Mid length. Well, yeah. So at the knee. No, just above the knee. Okay, so quite yeah. short. Mm. Do you remember that coat I bought? Remember, I got it right at the end of, we got it this year, but the really long, dramatic coat. We've talked yeah. about it on the podcast. Your Mary Poppins coat. My Mary Poppins coat. That yes. you wear with marigolds. Uh, well, yeah. Them yellow gloves. I'm, wait- I'm, I'm waiting for winter weather so I can put that coat on and it swooshes around. You love and... yourself in that coat. I love that coat. It's a really good, feel good coat. You're like Professor Snape down the corridors of hogwarts you know how he wafts yes you know how his cloak wafts that's what mm. you're like with that coat on. i know yeah can't wait oh i'm actually looking forward to the autumn it's nice yeah it's a good good season january february march can piss off but all like up until december it's like till till january yeah, it's, it's exciting crazy. isn't it, it is. yeah. there's loads going on there's lots going on especially mm. for us uh, anyway what else are you worried about you you've said to us a few times particularly whilst doing the audiobook am i cutting yeah, so I've seen a comment on Instagram. Oh. No, it wasn't on Instagram. I can't remember where it was. But oh, you, it was on YouTube, wasn't it? Yeah, you know when Ben and I had our budgie smugglers on? Yes, and for those that don't know what we're talking about, go and watch the Ben Adorm vlog on YouTube. And I turned around and said, you know, I think I just said to Ben, you don't mind me saying it again, do you? Can you say yes for, so we got it on record? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> It's a valuable contribution. Glad we, glad we plugged in his mic this week for that. Put the gun down. <laughs> um, so I, we were in our budgie smugs and I said, bloody hell, look at the state of Ben's pubes. Because they were literally like sticking out. I his... mean, I don't. They weren't that bad. I was just trying to be funny. And someone said I was body shaming his manscaping. And I wasn't. I wasn't, Ben. I didn't mean to. And it made me feel that I was. I apologise. I, I didn't mean, I, I wasn't. I didn't mean to body shame you. Um, I've now got less hair than an egg on okay. my body. Okay. Have you trimmed? I mean... of... See, now I feel bad. Because some people like a bit of bush. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. But excuse your... me. Excuse me. Hang on, I'm speaking to Ben. But your piabs were just like, they were sticking out every end. And I was just made a joke of it, so I didn't mean, I am sorry. Says you. Well, you've got hair everywhere. Yeah, but I trimmed. This is a conversation I don't know if I needed to have today. William, if you go and watch that video, is not in Budgie Smugglers because he had a sense of humour failure in the villa and refused to put them on, but anyway. I didn't want comments. I know what oh, I like. That's, so I didn't want to do it. I think, oh, Jordan, I did, you no, that's were. true. And there's loads of weird accounts on Twitter, which I showed you yesterday. There's like, I'll show you. Wait there. So there's like loads of weird accounts on Twitter that have tagged me and stuff that have screenshotted the um yes some specialist interest accounts let's put it this way that have screenshotted me and me and ben in the budgie smugglers just let me find it mm. so uh this is gay chub who's done a screenshot of me there yeah. you and your union jack okay i think we can see your flagpole um <laughs> this is pete who's also done another screenshot um where's the other one bareback cum lover I mean, and you were worried about felching? Literally zoomed in on my hairy armpits. Oh. So, told you. Anyway. Okay. But I don't think that makes you cutting. Okay. Cutting is where you sort of say things that you... Like when I saw my neighbour, who I won't name again, and I said, have you been to the gym? And she hadn't been. That would be cutting. 
Whereas what you are with Ben, that, you know, that's just called being a prick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did it at a wedding recently. Really? I was like, we was all waiting to go on. I went, oh, what time are you lot getting ready? And they were, <laughs> it's a load of, load, of mid, load of middle-aged women. And I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and one of them was meant to tie me bow tie. And I was like, better not ask now. I didn't realise, like you said, I was being a prick. I mean, that is quite rude. Uh, also this week, mm. I just want to tell you, um, I have invested, and, and don't at me and Jordan South me, but... I've invested in a Dyson hairdryer because everyone's been going on about them and I thought, oh, they, okay. can't, they can't be that good. Oh my God, look how good my hair looks at the moment. Honestly, as well, you get up in the morning, I'll do an impression of my hairdryer. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I'm going to do an impression of the Dyson hairdryer. If ready? we don't win the British Podcast Award, we'll know why. It's changed my... I cannot recommend it enough, right? This is the impression of the Dyson hairdryer. <laughs> Have you plugged it in? You don't even know if it's on. Anyway, it's not. This isn't a shameless plug. I'm just saying. It's, I love. I used to dread. I used to dread. You used to dread. I used. To, I used to dread. I used to dread. Spending too hair. much time with Freddie. Now I love it. It's like you know when you get a new rug or something in the house, and you're like you go in to have a look at it. <laughs> we're talking about Ben again. No. <laughs> you know when you get like something new in the house, a new oh. ornament, and you keep going into room to have a look at it. Right. It's like that. I'm well made up with it. So, Jolly good. Yeah. That wasn't like a shameless plug. No, no, well, I would hate to see what a shameless plug did look like. Spectators, you can listen back to it. <laughs> All right! We've said we're sorry. What else has been going on? Anything no, else? No, nothing. Should we just go to the uh, etiquetemology? Okay, what have you got for us this week? Well, here's the jingle. It's William, William, the etiquette geek. His knowledge, knowledge, is quite unique. He'll give you manners, manners, a subtle tweak. It's time for William's etiquette, 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 of the week. I'm going to talk to you about Aperol Spritz, because that's your new favourite drink. Oh, yeah. So we've looked into the history of the Aperol Spritz. Let me just say, I've decided it's a great day sesh drink. Because it, cause it's quite low alcohol, but it gets you pissed, but not pissed. It's great for if, if you're at, great at weddings and if you're on an all day mm -hmm. Well, is it common? Is it posh? We'll find out after these messages. All right, Gene Divas, thanks for sticking with us. Before we go to your wonderful questions and dilemmas, it's now time for William's Etiquetimology of the Week. Well, as you know, it's the orange coloured drink that's taken the world and Jordan by storm. But how much do you actually know about Aperol Spritz? Well, um, I'm worried here that you've just copied a, an article that was recently in the Sunday Times. Oh, really? Yeah, because they talked about it. So. Okay, well, what did they tell you? Well, they told us that it actually started off as quite a pauper's drink in Italy. And it used to be for people that didn't have much money. And then about only 10 years ago, it's become really popular and chic all of a sudden because Aperol put it in a wine glass to make it look nice and chic. And they, uh, it's the same company that owns Campari. Campari. So that was like, how can we market this? And that was William's Etiquetimology <laughs> of the week. It's well, now time. No, you've got bits wrong. But good on you for trying. Um, the Aperol Spritz is, of course, just one type of spritz, which was pr is actually properly called Spritz Veneziano, because the drink was, as you sort of say, invented in Italy, but in Venice. Uh, a spritz is a wine-based aperitif, and in the late 18th century, the Veneto region of modern Italy was, in effect, part of Austria. So technically, you could say it's an Austrian drink. The Austrians set up an unofficial officer's mess in Piazza San Marco, and the occupiers found that the local wines were a little bit too strong for their liking and began to ask for a splash or a spritzen of sparkling water to be added. So that was the first version of the spritz. And despite its origin as a drink invented by the invaders, Venetians took the spritz to heart, seeing it as their own. However, this does change quite recently. Now, Aperol itself was invented in Padua in 1919, and at some time around then, someone made a spritz but added the new bitter Aperol, or Select, which is a similar type of drink, uh, inspired by the earlier drink, Campari Soda. Uh, this new drink was the second version of the spritz. Until that point, all spritzes were made with normal, non-sparkling wine. Whereas now, the modern version of the spritz that you like is made with Prosecco, and it only dates to 1970, as you say. The Aperol spritz remained mainly a northern Italian drink until 2003, when the makers of Aperol, as you say, were taken over by Campari, who began to promote the drink. However, they don't like it in Venice anymore because they see it as a tourist drink. Mm. 
So you're sort of right. I just fleshed it out. For it's you. a great drink. Oh, I do don't you, love it. I really, do you not? No. I don't. You've got to have a good one because I had quite a dodgy one in Spain. Right. I've told you I love Spanish beer. You've mentioned it once or twice. Okay. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Anyway, before we go on to the listeners' dilemmas, we've got the exciting competition to tell you about in partnership with Waterstones. We are giving away two tickets to a recording of Help I Sexted My Boss in this very studio in London. You could be in the room with me, William, EPB, and maybe even Diego. I'll be there, boys. Don't you worry about it. I'll be there with bells on. Subject to his availability, he is quite a diva. He is not a guarantee. I mean, that's at the rate we're going, neither is Jordan. Anyway, to enter the competition, pre-order our upcoming book from Waterstones before it's published on the 9th of November. If, however, you have already pre-ordered it from Waterstones, you've already entered. Sexofmyboss.com forward slash Waterstones will take you where you need to go to pre-order your copy. Or, yeah, we've got a T in the middle, Waterstones. Sexofmyboss.com slash Waterstones is where you need to go. And to help those of you who might live a little further away, travel costs will also be covered up to £200. Full terms and conditions can be found on the Waterstones website. Anyway, should we go on to the listeners' dilemmas? Let's do it. This one is from Jess. Hello, William and Jordan. My question is on behalf of my husband. He recently went to a stag do for his brother, where they went to a ticketed event. They all sent the best man money for the tickets, and he arranged everything. But when they got to the venue, the best man revealed that he had bought tickets for the wrong day. They all had to buy new tickets for the correct day on the promise that the best man would send them a refund in the future. As you can guess, the money has never been returned. What is the etiquette here? Should the best man have paid for the new tickets, given it was his responsibility in the first First place, or is it right for everyone to share the cost of the mistake? Thanks in advance, Jess. Jess, I'm currently helping organise a stag do for my brother, for my other brother. Oh, it's a stress. And you're going back to Benidorm, aren't you? I'm going back to Benidorm. Do you uh, need any suggestions from me as to what not to do? No, you're totally fine. Okay. It's a stress. Mm. And I'm like doing least. He's doing it all. He's I got can a believe spread, that. He's got a spreadsheet and everything. Has he? Yeah. So, um, I don't know, it depends how much money it is. It, it's the best man's fault. However, I think it would be unfriendly, unless that best man is a multimillionaire, for all the friends to say, oh, yeah, well, your fault, so you've got to compass this. I would probably just say, I bought the tickets for the wrong day. I'll try and contact the organiser to try and get the money back. And then you don't go to the ticketed event at all. So no further money is spent. No, they've already been. I think they did it there and then on the day. Well, they should. Yeah, I know, but I would have said they shouldn't have done. Yeah, in I, the future. I, I agree. They probably shouldn't. Have, they should have cut the losses, and I think your boyfriend's gonna have to cut his losses as well. However, I mean, look, I'm not. I mean, I am a business owner, but if I had someone that said to me, "Oh, look, I bought tickets for day X, wrong day. We have subsequently bought other tickets for a sooner day. Can we have the money back on the other thing?" I would be compassionate and go, "Yes, totally." And I can see that there are two transactions have the money back. However, we all know, I don't know what this ticketed event was. Some ticket providers don't, uh, aren't that generous. But you. But also, if you're writing to the to the ticketed event, just be honest. Yeah, get Explain back in Explain what's happened. Uh, hopefully you might get your money back that way. I mm. um, hope that has helped in some way, Jess, but there, uh, to be honest, there isn't much you can do, really. This one is from Holly. Dear William Jordan and PB, recently while walking in town, a stranger in front of me sneezed. Instinctively, I said, bless you and she turned around to look at me as if I'd told her to F off. After this interaction, I was left wondering what is the right thing to do when a stranger sneezes. Is it okay to say bless you, as I instinctively did, or is that rude? Thanks in advance, Holly. Yeah, I do. I've done this on the Tube in London before, and I had really dirty looks, but I, I'm saving them from going to hell. Well, as you, I mean, we're doing it almost, you get two etiquettomologists for free in this episode. Um, bless you goes back to, of course, when you sneeze sort of in the bubonic plague and people thought, sort of a bit like COVID more recently, that basically you had the Black Death and you were about to die and it was your soul leaving your body. And so when you said bless you, it was like, well, bless you because you're about to die. Mm. However, I mean, I think within all of our lifetime, that has not been a thing. And so I think it is a, it's a courtesy, it's a reflex thing. And probably Holly said this reflexively and didn't mean any harm by it. So no, don't turn around and and tell them to F off or give them a dirty look. But some people don't like it. Just say thank you. Yes. They say, oh, thank you. Especially if they're a stranger and you're never going to meet them again. It's Just really, be nice. It's really awkward for me, though, because I've been blessed by strangers after sneezing, not, like, religiously. And um, I sneeze and then sneeze again. And then, you, cause you know what I'm like when I start going? I can sneeze four or five times in a row. Were you there when I had a big sneezing fit in the taxi in Benidorm? No. I did about ten sneezes in a row. I think it's a record for me. 
Is that the highlight of Benidorm for you? It's one, one of the things I can remember. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not surprised. I had the window open, though, and I covered my mouth. Well done. This is from Dusty. Hello, William and Jordan. Son of a picture man. No one employs a pin. What is it? Dusty Springfield. Yeah, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Billy Ray was dead. He was blowing on his thing and the thing that he's come back home. And Shall we crash on? Billy Ray was a preacher's son, and when his daddy was home, he's a son. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the show. She used to be. <laughs> she was. Yeah, and I've listened for a while now, but I think it's time to dust off this tale and share it with you. My name is Dusty. The reason for this nickname will soon become clear. Sadly, before my wife and I got married, my father-in-law died and was cremated. I found myself alone in my mother-in-law's house while she and my wife were out. I started reminiscing about the funny conversations we had and looking at his remains. A tiny voice in my head said, I wonder what human ashes look like. So I took his ashes and pulled the top off, but it was capped. It kind of looked like two Pringles tubes, one inside the other. This is the part where I should have stopped, but no. I pulled on the tube and it started to slide up. It was tough, but it was sliding out, and when it was almost out, I had a revelation. I asked myself, what are you doing, you weirdo, and decided to stop. In a blind panic, I pushed the tube back down, but that was a big mistake. The pressure of me pushing down had made my father-in-law's ashes spray out of the can, covering all over covering all the furniture and me. I had my father-in-law in my mouth, eyes and hair. I rushed to clean him up. My wife and mother-in-law returned to find me cleaning up and assumed it was a good deed and proceeded to call me husband material for helping around the house. Oh, God. Fast forward to before the wedding, I sat her down and told her the whole dusty tale. She found it funny and said her dad would have find, found it funny too. So, William, my question is, should I let my mother-in-law know? Keep up the incredible work. Love from Dusty. Where's he now in the Uva? No. No, I mean, I, I don't know. He's... Uh... I hope it was modern, though, because now you can... With the Uvas now, you can just empty it back into the... If you have a bagless vacuum cleaner, Yeah, if yes. you have a bagless, but years ago... Oh, do you remember changing Uva bag? You had to change Uva to change Uva bag after you changed it. Hmm. Um, <laughs> fascinating. I... I would... Uh, prob- it depends on, depends on if your mother-in-law has a good sense of humour and you don't feel it will trigger her. My gut feeling is ignorance is bliss here. That would be what I would suggest. I would uh, feel it out with your now wife and see what she thinks about it. And then ask her about the mother-in-law. And see if she thinks it's a good idea. Because I think they'd know better than us. But if not, I agree with William. Mm. Ignorance is bliss. Um, it reminds me, if you remember we had a story a few months ago about the hamster. I think the hamster was called Dusty as well. It was, yeah. So obviously, if, if you ever meet anyone called Dusty, you know there is a story rev- involving ashes So ask them about it. This one is from Joshua. Hello, boys. I need some help. I admitted to my boss that I brushed my teeth in the shower. She exclaimed how strange it was and proceeded to ask every other member of staff if they did this and if they thought it was weird. They have asked over 30 people so far and they have all stated how strange it is. What's wrong with brushing my teeth in the shower? I do pits, bits, brush my teeth and then wash my hair. It saves time. Is there a teeth brushing etiquette that I don't know? Am I strange? Many thanks. Joshua. No, Joshua, I know lots of people that brush their teeth in the shower. Ben does. Producer Ben brushes teeth in the shower. I don't, personally, but I know lots of people do. Don't be tough shamed. Sorry? Tough shamed. <laughs> You pube shamed him. I didn't pube shame him. I just made a joke about his wild pubes. Right. Don't be tough shamed. Um, I mean, I probably wouldn't. I would maybe just set your alarm clock five minutes earlier and do it over the sink. Where like do most you brush people. your teeth? I bet you do the full four minutes as well, don't you? Four minutes? It's yeah. two. Oh, is it four, two? I thought it was four. Oh, I do have a good new electric toothbrush, though. I paid for it, so I won't mention the brand name. And uh, that was that was good. Uh, and it's very good. And it's ultrasonic. And it cuts off after two minutes. So you just press go, and it pulses after 30 seconds. So you sort of know that you've hit a 30-minute marker. And then cuts off after two. Okay. My teeth have never felt so clean. What do you feel about people that brush the teeth on the toilet? Well, I'd rather you did it in the shower than on the loo. Is it bad on the loo? Uh, yes. You shouldn't be doing anything on the loo other than the loo. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> no, Joshua. I mean, I think, look, if you you do you, it's a free free country, but it's also a free country for all your co-workers to think you're weird. I'm reading Atomic Habits at the moment. Thank you very much for the recommendation, Ben. Thank you. Really into it. It's all about like, small changes you can make, and I'm trying to spend less time on my phone. And we haven't gone into too much detail. I can't remember last time I had a poo without my phone in my hand. It was so... I, I got so bored. I was reading... 
bottle of bucket bleach bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Do you Honestly. keep your cleaning products in the bathroom? Next, to, I have my bleach next to it. So we've talked about oh, no. this. Oh no! I didn't know what to do with myself. My body went into shock. So I'm, I'm like trying to do small changes. Like don't get. So when I get up in the morning now, I leave my phone up bedside table. Can't get a coffee. When I go to the toilet, I don't take my phone with me. Okay. Just didn't know what to do with myself. Hmm. <laughs> At the back of my uh, <laughs> Domestos bleach bottle. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> this one is from Rosie. Last one. Hi, William and Jordan. My cousin Cara is in search for Mr. Wright, but she has no chat and gets nowhere. When I am in her company, she always throws her phone at me to message some mails. Me being the funny person I am, I always get the conversation rolling, but when I go home, she can't keep the chat up. How do I tell her she's very vanilla and needs better chat? And is it acceptable to pretend to be her to lure the boys in? Rosie. Oh, Rosie. Well, I'm going to go straight off the bat there. No, it's not, Rosie. And you need to turn around to your cousin and say, no. No, it's all right. Simple as that. It's all right for your friends to help you. I've helped friends before. It's all right to help, I I think. It's all right to help them. But then you you, you leave it to them. Because I think the difference between Rosie and her cousin Cara is that Rosie has... A grade level chat, presumably, it's... and Cara's on like J level. Leave, leave her alone. Like, so it's all right. It's all right being vanilla. Some people love vanilla. Yes, and she'll find someone that. No, but there's a difference favorite... between vanilla and boring. There's someone's favorite flavor is vanilla. Some people like boring. Right. So she will find someone. You don't have. To... She can't. Don't try and. She can't be someone she's not. Okay. You know what I mean. I do know what you mean. So, yeah. That's my advice. Just let her be her and she'll find someone that's... But I think maybe, Rosie, what you do, if you want a nice halfway house, is that you don't actually physically type the message, but you sort of almost coach Cara into, well, this is the sort of thing I'd say. Maybe put it into your own words so Cara can get better, rather than you physically typing whilst Cara's washing the glasses or something. Favourite flavour ice cream. Can't say gun to yet because a lot of listeners don't like it, but three, two, one, favourite flavour ice cream. Uh, um, uh, cherry. Cherry, or like, like um, alcoholic cherry one, or rum and raisin. Of course, it's God, I've rum really got, I've really got a problem. Then, <laughs> favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, honeycomb. Oh, oh, that's good. So good. Adam, mint chocolate. Mint chocolate. Yours? Uh, ben and Jerry's fish food chocolate. Can you say anything without mentioning a brand? No, because it's it's real. Oh, I told you there's a little opening on end oh, of the street. God's sake. No, I'm not even joking. I've told you. That's what I was meant to remember, but you waffling on when you said, how has your week been? I found out there's a little opening on Endemy Street. Your property prices are plummeting, aren't I they? I am so... Don't give me the wrap-up sign, how dare you? It's like being back in work. You turned up 15 minutes late. <laughs> yes, because you walked in and you oh, sorry guys, I overslept. It's like texting at fucking half seven in the morning. Because I can't go... I was on the piss this weekend, I can't do it. I had about eight hours sleep all weekend. I slept oh, in this I morning. Oh, I see. Yeah, make your colleagues take the slack for your social life. Right, fine. I won't talk about a little opening on the end that. of my street. Relatable content. Sorry, Gene Davis. You, uh, you're joining us midway through an argument. They know it. They you talk it. about your honey old comb ice cream that all rest of middle class lot have had, and I'll keep it real with little. Thanks. Sorry, Gene Davis. Ben and Jerry's as well, dear. I make Bob and Gary's that you get from Lidl. <laughs> their version of it. As always, remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Wednesdays and Fridays and share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at Sex of My Boss. You can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexofmyboss.com or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive cell seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sextedmyboss.com. See you on Friday. Thank you.